that he's going to open source. Well, sorry, no, no, no not open source. <coughs> he is going to um, make it available for uh, all versions of uh, AMUDAR uh, available for free download. Um, he had hoped to have it done by now, and possibly even actually did it last night, but... Uh, Um, basically, now he's done an update um, to it, so it's not only Pi 3 compatible and zero page protection aware, but uh, he, he, he includes an emulation, I believe, for zero page for 26 web applications. And he's now basically locking each build to a particular CPU type, so um, that uh, Otherwise, you know, if you try to do the wrong version, the wrong hardware, all sorts of weird things are happening. Maybe work a bit, but not properly. So he, he's going to do it that way. So there will be a different download for different CPUs. Um, and uh, he basically says it will also enable him to get the maximum performance because some CPUs have more facilities than others. So uh, he, he's doing that. And uh, yeah, I mean, having multiple builds, of course, does mean he has maximum headaches maintaining as he, as he puts it. But uh, he's hoping, he was hoping to get the uh, latest development binaries sorted well, yesterday and get it uploaded sometime this week on the website with the suitable bits for that. So that, that's great um, news uh, on that part. And um, you know, we do whatever we can to help him do these things. Because one of the things is we have, we do uh, what we do do um, is there are various people with various projects that uh, um, you know uh, working on them and uh, we loan out equipment, provide them information, and do whatever else. Because sometimes, as a business, we are able to get more information out of companies than they can do direct if they want to information. Um, when when uh, the thesis was working on the the iGet and the Panda board um, port of Riscos. Um, he uh, uh, he was well, you know, finding different bits of information out of them, so we can enable to do that. Um, and a variety of load equipment and one thing or another there. So, um, how many of you um, were here last year? Most of you, I expect, can you go to the brief show? So, 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 well, actually, quite a few worked. Um, and uh, have, I, have any of you been to Wakefield or the South West show? Many of you? A few, but not many. Okay, well I will mention a, a few things that are not the latest, but um, will certainly be made and we've not seen before. Basically, at the show here last year, we uh, launched the update to Photodesk, Photodesk 3.14, which of course will be a Pi release, but you know, we didn't think of that. Until after someone else pointed out to me. Um, and that was basically giving it uh, proper Pi support and uh, it also supported zero page protection, um, things like that. But possibly more importantly, it also added. Um, Added, um, basically what they did was it added support for much uh, wider range of JPEG, so the latest styles of JPEG. A lot of people were saying, I can't load in certain JPEGs into Photodesk for it, it just won't let me. If I load it in via this program, then save it out from that program, then I can do it, but you know, it's a bit of a faff. But now that has been uh, fixed by using much later library, 
Um, slight downside is um, the data library is slower. And if someone's doing masses of uh, work on it, you can actually just reconnect two files um, and get more speed back if you do extra JPEG support on that. And the other thing was also was adding um, what is called LTRGB support. So that's basically on the latest machines, like some modes on the Raspberry Pi, um, all the modes on the titanium based system, like the PDOTI and the uh, iGet based system through PDOIG. They all use this slightly different order of colours, um, but they, that is now supported um, in the Photodesk uh, 3.14. And then earlier on this year, we one of the things we found was that uh, uh, mice, people that are using legacy systems, the old Acorn nine pin needing quadrature mouse, it's getting more and more difficult to either try and repair them or get hot well, can really get hold of second hand ones kind of made donkey's years. So we managed we found that yes, right. We've had a source of some serial mice, which you can use. Um, for this cost 3.5 onwards, you can just plug it in and configure it, and it works. And I just saw me three button mice do the job. Um, uh, prior to this cost 3.5, you need to know the driver for the first cost 3.1 machines. But that has been a bit superseded now. But, um, that, but uh, yeah, that is available as a cheaper new option. Um, for anyone that needs it. I'll come on to the latest uh, my situation with mice in a moment. Um, then one of the other things that um, we launched earlier on this year basically was graphics tablet, um, USB uh, yeah, up to date, current, you know, you can buy the tablet now, you know, maybe many of you will store something, but we've got a driver now um, for that because of a, a French Wiscos author, who's, uh, he lives in France, um, which is uh, very thankful for, and he's he's done the driver for that. So it's now it's a uh, pressure sensitive, I think, a thousand um, level of pressure sensitivity on it, and um, and because the driver is written in such a way, um, it works just straight away with Photodesk. Photodesk didn't need to be modified in any way at all, and anything else that uses the, um, it's the Paradise um, produce the original, uh, one of the most common graphics tablets, the Paint Pal, correctly name. Um, anything that uses the, the, the same software, the Paint Pal API, um, will work uh, with the driver and therefore with this with hardware that they're doing, which um, it, it's not a massively large tablet, but you know, it satisfies a lot of people's requirements. Um, we have actually, I'll sort of get back briefly to Photodesk, um, there was, a, if, there was a, uh, one, let's go, Photodesk 3.14, we have a slight patch available to it, which is a free patch, um, in the, because we found that it's, with uh, a, the, eight, eight, sorry, the 8 9 home and the uh, summon versions of select, there was an, uh, an issue. Um, in actual fact, you can, uh, you can configure it to get around it, but we've fixed it in, in, in response so that you don't have to do the fiddle of the compatibility settings within response uh, 6 and on the 8 9. Um, and then uh, new things that, um, in actual fact, haven't yet been sort of shown at any exhibition, Wisconsin exhibition, because uh, we've launched them since uh, Wakefield. And that is, um, well, we're, it's, it's based on what they call the Pi Desktop, but we're calling it the Raspberry Road Light. And basically, it's a, it's a way of getting almost everything you get in the Raspberry Row, but in, in an even smaller case in that we have, in, in the case here, so it's got a, a, an SSD drive in there. Now, one thing that, um, it's, uh, so uh, on uh, 
the, it's got proper power on and off. Um, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's all shut down or turned on appropriately. We've written the software for that. Um, it's got the normal uh, network and USB ports. This here takes the USB back inside for the um, SSD drive. Um, and oh, I guess the power goes in here. So the power goes in up here. The, New board that's in here, the extra board that's not um, not sort of standard on a pie, and um, and then your normal uh, audio and video output. So it makes things nice and neat, um, not totally dis uh, dissimilar in sort of specification to a full Raspberry Pi, but it doesn't have things like uh, the uh, option of having a CD drive inside the case, um, uh, or have the firing system LEDs, and a few things like that. But um, now the thing is, the SSD, I said the USB goes inside for SSD, because there is a bit of misunderstanding. I've seen a number of people uh, posting saying, oh, I want X interface for the Pi, because that does, that, you know, that will be a faster way than using a USB to SSD adapter. Well, it's not with all SSDs are connected via USB um, on, on the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi basically storage is either on the SD bus, the SD card, or on the USB bus. But they, they, it's very good, nice and reliable, um, but you know you don't get the blinding speed you get of a true native or because whilst the SSD drives are SATA. Uh, end SATA drives in there, um, they obviously don't have the same speed as an SSD drive connected direct to a full SATA interface um, like you get uh, on the uh, Rapido systems as they, their, their SSDs are blindingly fast um, on those. So that um, and basically you know, we, we supply it with either nominal 8 gigabyte SSD, which for many of us are using not enough, 32, 128 you know, gigabytes um, you know, are a decent range of drives sizes available there. Um, and then um, the other thing that we've, we launched a couple of months ago was um, this. This is what I uh, talk about going back to mice, um, a risk loss user in Sweden, um, in actual fact, has uh, developed a full microcontroller in here. So it's very, it's not too dissimilar to uh, Stuart Tool Developments, the, their PS2 mouse mini, in that that goes from the, uh, take, uh, takes actually a PS2 mouse and interfaces it through to the quadrature using a microcontroller in the uh, in the cable. Um, uh, unfortunately, we've not been able to get any more of those from, I don't know whether they are playing on another production branch, but I have not, not managed to speak to anyone in the Tour at the moment in really a year now. Um, we have a, a couple left of their interfaces, literally, I think it's two or three. But um, they interface to PS2. This, um, we were able to get the bullet and use a microcontroller that interfaces to USB. So this will now work with pretty well, well work with every uh, USB mouse. We found that so we found that we tried a gaming mouse on it and it just didn't really like it at all. But of just ordinary plain mice um, track models, um, this uh, will, to, uh, will work to it. Um, of course risk of still doesn't support the scroll wheel facility so um, you are limited to you know, movement and three buttons. Um, and uh, the, you, the natural fact the, the, it's all actually open source, so you can theoretically go and make your own, but um, it's, uh, as we found, not the easiest of things to do. Um, and the uh, surface mount assembly, uh, it's of, of one main, of one chip primarily, but um, it's or something, um, things on it, um, and uh, so, and then we found this, we managed to 
gets makes some boards up where it not neatly fits in this case. It's open source hobbyist, yeah, some people love that and want that, but a lot of people I think prefer being something that's you know hopeful to be reliable, they're not going to worry about you know, breaking the wires off. This is what we're straight away from that uh, in here for that. So they're not cheap at 49 pounds, but they are, you know, well, we have been selling refurbished acorn mice at 50 pounds because that's, uh, that's, um, that's the going rate on, on eBay, even for unwarranty ones. Yes. The, the other thing is, yes, um, it's quite interesting that uh, we actually have recently been putting some stuff to sell up on eBay, and we can sell stuff up on eBay for more money than it's on our website. <laughs> because some people just say they listen to uh, um, know to look necessarily or go on look. Of course, we, we do have to pay quite a bit now in eBay fees, which now amounts to well, with the e PayPal and whatever fees, it comes to over 10% of, uh, of the fees on that. But uh, no, if there is anything you see on, our, on eBay, do have a look on our own site, it's probably cheaper um, there. Um, and pretty much, I think, yes, on, on, we've got the same price on, on, of this on both sides, but on eBay, you pay postage on our site, you don't. Um, right, so. That's um, some of the, 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 the newer things we've launched. We did have, hope to have two new things actually here. We mentioned briefly one of them. Um, if Keith component arrived, we would have it, but it didn't. And that basically is the, um, the PyTop V2. Um, they're actually just still calling it the PyTop, but uh, it's uh, they redesigned the PyTop so. Basically, instead of having uh, it slide, the, the thing to allow you to access inside sliding out to the side, the whole keyboard slides forward. The keyboard is now larger, it goes right the way across, and instead of having the, the, uh, having the touchpad on the right of the keyboard, the touchpad now is in front of the keyboard, like more, most uh, laptops. Um, the only thing is, um, we don't actually know how, if it really is going to be suitable for RISCOS or not yet, because there are a number of things until you actually get our hands on it or information out of the PyTop, and unfortunately, getting information out of the PyTop is not really, doesn't work because we're trying, we tried for a long time to get the official API out of them of how to monitor and control the power, monitor the battery, charge the battery, and monitor and control it and screen brilliance uh, adjustments, but uh, uh, we never got it out of them. Fortunately, there was some clever chap in Germany, I think it was, who reverse engineered it and documented it, so we were using that information, we were then able to write the risk of software to control it. Um, we don't know if they've done any changes to any of those APIs, um, so that may require a lot of extra work. That's done. Um, it may take quite a while. The other thing is to get networking um, enabled on the uh, PyTop, um, you either have to plug in a cable, an Ethernet cable, or we normally offer one of these nano routers that then allows you to use Wi Fi. Um, not ideal because you have to, it's, there isn't a, a risk of front end to go and change. Uh, simply oh, now a cost of coffee or whatever it is and their password today is free muffins or something um, you have to go into the router to change it um, which is normally at the moment going to be uh, having to use uh, otter because most of these router and nano routers um, won't work with you know net surf or any of the other source browsers um, so by using the nano router, we have to uh, get the Ethernet cable to come back inside, uh, well, to, yeah, to go within the PyTop. On the PyTop 2, or sorry, the PyTop original PyTop, that um, was relatively easy to do. And we were able to do that using some flat network cables. Um, we haven't yet been able to 
see close enough to explain, see how we're going to be able to root cable in that format. We may end up having to actually hack a slot in the case, um, which we obviously would prefer not to. It also appears, so that's, so we don't know about the API for Kapower. Uh, yes, the other thing was the um, uh, real time clock. Um, to enable you to have a battery backed up real time clock um, on, on the Pi top, we use, uh, use a physical way of mounting it, which doesn't appear like it's going to be possible on the new Pi top, but we will find a way. But uh, I'm not quite sure how to do it, how to be doing that. And then there is the version 2, there is one, well, two things that may well make a, a significant difference for some people um, in that uh, the old Pytop was available in grey or green um, and uh, the new one is only available in their green which is rather garish not to everyone's taste but uh, you know, some people may well you know, uh, like it or so if you live with it for the <coughs> Um, and the other thing is, they're only currently planning on doing it with um, a US keyboard layout. So, no pound sign on the keyboard. <coughs> um, obviously, that can be mapped, but it's not ideal. Um, as a bit of market research, I, when I asked the question of the sales manager about it, I said I thought for our customers, a lot of people not having the, not having the uh, proper UK keyboard and uh, having to go for green was a, might dissuade a few people. So I'd be interested to know if, if there's anyone here that would say that they might consider it if it had UK and was available in the grey. Um, is, is there anyone that's that here that would uh, might, might consider it? Or other people here that would consider it? Uh, I suspect other things, of course, we might need everyone here who would be in the market for something like this because it's already bought the original, the current Python, so not particularly in the market. But uh, if anyone's got any query, questions, or comments on that, please, please let me know on, on the Python. Um, the other thing, of course, sorry, the other main thing is I forgot to mention um, that the new Python has a higher resolution screen. It's uh, full HD, you know, 1920, uh, 1080, as opposed to these 1366, 768 of the, um, the original Python. Right, so then moving on to. Um, sorry? Sorry, um, yes. Yes. Uh, main, of course, is, the main thing is now our desktop systems. Whilst this does provide an entry level desktop, you know, our uh, the Raspberry Row, Raspberry Pi 2 or Raspberry Pi 3 inside, um, you know, it's a very good system, but sort of more complete, up to date, using the latest um, CPU, because as I expect many of you know that the um, things like the uh, the Panda board and uh, previous systems and the, uh, and the IMX6, they use the Cortex-A9 CPU inside, but the later systems that are now doing the Rapidos, they use the Cortex-A15, which is, runs significantly faster, a clock speed, and per cycle you get more out of it, and they both have native SATA support. So uh, you get the very fast disk access. Now, with the, if you're looking for a new full system, basically, right, so there is the, the Armex 6 system. It, it has some key selling features like the fact of single screen, high resolution, greater than 2048 uh, wide, you can do, but it is using the CPU. On the later systems, you get um, the faster speed. Um, Considerably faster SATA than it's on the uh, on the IMX6, and they so by being the latest generation of system, 
they should be around for you know, quite a lot longer and have the greater longevity. And nowadays, support, software support for them is there. Um, we're always adding to them. We've recently improved our support on the titanium based system, a few tweaks, um, things like so if you want to have titanium with Linux in there as well, um, you don't end up with an icon. So you click on it, it says, oh, this is unformatted. And you say, oh, I'll format that. You just find you formatted over your EXT formatted uh, Linux drive. So we hide it from you, but allow you um, access to, if you put a, a, a fat formatted drive in there as well. Um, we've done a few tweaks for that. Um, also, just one last comment. Um, you, you, I'm sure we've probably heard about risk cost developments and, and we're very glad of the, the work they've started on doing various things there and we're offering some support uh, where appropriate um, for that and wish them well. But uh, any questions? If you want to have a look at anything, do come up to stand. We do have the rapid post for videos set up. So yeah, do, do come in. I just had that Yeah, no, 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 that's so. Um, uh, if you have anything we can hopefully demonstrate, because yes, we're doing our business now is a mixture of our uh, Raspberry Pi related stuff, nothing to do with rest loss, we do a bit of stuff there, um, but uh, um, and then we're doing still quite a lot of stuff with the Acorn Legacy people that either say, oh, I used to have. An Acorn system, I want to play X game again I used to many years ago, or uh, someone was saying, oh, I couldn't afford an Archimedes when I was a kid, I couldn't afford one, I like to buy an Archimedes now. Or just people that have got a risk free system, a C system, and just needing them to carry on doing the same job that it was doing many years ago. And have to change, have to open up to change the battery and the Because if you do have any old Acorn systems and have to change them,